and uh, that's why we come to the conclusion as we have started with the beginning that this acosmic entity which according to Clarges in biocentric phenomenology has attacked the human soul some 15,000 years ago let us say because we can see it in the traces of its you know influence because the first traces then that are to be found in archaeology and so are the symbols are the signs are the the, the, the birth of writing of freezing because writing is basically be it uh, hieroglyphic or symbolic or alphabetic or numeric these are symbols signs that f- that are objective traces of the frozen conceptualization of the phenomenological experience of the dynamic mirror of the soul so already with the first writing this road to self destruction begins ladies and gentlemen only the poets the bards the, those who are in love who are crazy who's who are under the wings of cosmogenetic eros in the erotic ecstasy in the agon, agonic and the sports ecstasy and in the cosmic mysteries who delve passively who let themselves be you know whoa, carried by the river of life passively that's why acts of consciousness are according to Clarges the metaphysics of evil because the biosphere itself is flowing dynamically and passively there is no center of power in the biosphere which is trying intentionally to subdue its surrounding area it's only in human race that this egos have started to function and to subdue its surrounding egos ne? that is culture ne? politics and education and whatever you call it um, we suffer under this disease of personal will to power and the only remedy is passivity which of course does not have to be slow no i mean if you say passivity i don't think somebody like like lying down and doing nothing no passivity means that you start to listen to the calling of nature inside your soul and this can be very dynamic no? it can make you run like hell in the woods so shouting and dancing like a mad dionysus well and it is still passive ladies and gentlemen so i hope this speech was directed to an uh, i don't know his name i must look a friend of uh, philosophical quality who has by just the selection of um, this playlist i have looked into has uh, a good taste according to my taste actually ludwig klages is there the great hero of biocentric phenomenology he is on the same depth level as heidegger sometimes even deeper i have delved into heidegger and nietzsche very deeply and i must say that the depths of analysis in klages of the phenomenological experience uh, is, is 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 greater is deeper is wider and if you would like to attack klages by this uh, illogical statement that he is writing in concepts and he is is attacking uh, the conceptualization of the world into ideas yeah into abstract ideas then the answer is simply this another great discovery by klages there are two modes of thinking there is a mode of uh life supporting thinking or 
meaningful thinking as he call it which is the same as the deep thinking of heidegger which is the same as uh, pictorial thinking of uh, rudolf steiner or uh, visual thinking of rudolf steiner no? which is the same as goethe was uh, had in mind when he talked about this urpflanze or the urbilder ja Klar, I guess that's why he calls also the morphogenetic fields that he has in mind. He calls them urbilder, ne? which def- definitely are not Platonic ideas, yeah? because they are dynamic. This dynamic software, this dynamic morphogenetic fields, are constantly changing. So that this, even if you would would somehow suppose it is a metaphysical. Uh, 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 level yeah that that these are somehow over the matter into which they embody this is not correct this is not in a platonic idealistic uh, sense that these ideas are permanent and uh, the ideas of plato are after all they uh, are mathematically and geometrically describable which put them on the side of the enemy of life no? even though at the beginning plato thought of them as idolos so little pictures and the ideal horse was supposed to be in the platonic he- uh, heaven as a perfect horse but nevertheless a horse with the shape yeah, of a uh, perfect beauty but later he changed them into geometric force maybe under the influence of pythagoras who is the great enemy of life naturally because when somebody says the number is the essence of everything then we can all uh, put him together with descartes who says everything which is real is countable and measurable and we can put them into the same spot with the english emperors like locke and bacon and with some people like Leibniz and Laplace who says that no numbers are everything you only have to know the great number and you are with god and money also is also a number so these all guys together with the bankers are the enemies of life ontologically speaking yeah? because they change life into numbers okay measurable quantities we have lost the trace we have been carried away by a dynastic morphogenetic stream of images so let's trace it back where we have diverted by the way it's uh, the great heidegger himself who says that diversion is the essence of deep thinking what is diversion else then being drawn away from your conceptual idea of a line of arguments being drawn away by an inspiration of images of morphogenetic fields of associations they draw you away and you succumb like a great biocentric thinker or a bard on a biocentric mattress you are you are a thinker who is who is emotionally carried away but he still manages to describe the images and the thoughts that's why we are back to where we have departed to this diversion digression calls it um, heidegger which is the essence of deep thinking of of life supporting think- thinking so this is the first form of thinking we are experiencing emotionally loaded images and we point at them with words like a poet we do not make abstract concepts out of our pictorial and emotional images sometimes it is difficult to say that they are pictorial in the sense that i'm seeing like i can imagine a tennis field or a shore of a lake 
visually, but they are definitely always emotional. This brings another point of view that I have uh, made in my lectures in German and in Czech, that an experience which is without emotion is not a life-supporting way to knowledge. No? A way to knowledge or creating the models of the world and of, of ourselves that are achieved without emotions are per definitionem mistakes which are life negating enemies of life the great Nietzsche all human or to human human being are condemned to make mistakes when they start to make models of themselves and of nature and of cosmos and of everything. Because they are part of the whole, they cannot make a correct, 100% correct model, conceptual model of the whole. That must be put as a premise, this is logical. Our anthropological perspective will always reduce the totality of cosmos, of nature, even of our bodies and souls into some uh, approximation only. This is sure, but these approximations, these models can be life-supporting, mistakes that simply lead to success, né? and on the whole, human race has made mistakes that have uh, survived. No? I mean, we have survived. So that is to say, our mistakes were good <laughs> for us. Up to a certain time, as I've said, as long as these mistakes were concerning uh, objective world of everyday, um, uh, let's say, everyday um, practical life, yeah? and maybe some religions, and maybe uh, poetry and art that was not uh, demanding, you know, to be followed 100%. Yeah? It's a crazy man who uh, were mumbling about gods and uh, crazy artists that were seeing visions and they were leaving traces of it now, to a certain sense didn't demand that everybody believes it to be true, no? even if the inspiration was true. We must refuse Kant's idea of um, art as an aesthetic illusion. Eh? Uh, the, the, the willing suppression of disbelief, yeah? which Berg defines it, eh? that as if art was something you know we create in our brains because it, 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 it's, it is pleasant. Eh? No, the experience of an artist is, as any other experience, a true merging of morphogenetic fields with something which is outside of him. If it is a life-supporting art, he will celebrate that which has influenced him, which has entered his soul. But if he is, uh, you know, his body and soul as an individual is already somehow deranged, which is possible because uh, the, the epi epigenetic and genetic of the human race is, is a source of very many mistakes. You know? uh, so if he is somehow deranged, he will create a deranged art out of his experience, even though his inspiration may have a true source. You know? The same applies for religion. Deranged characters will create deranged uh, dangerous religions, uh, fanaticism, and you know, like they are deranged politicians, uh, let's say bodily and uh, uh, in their bodies and soul, decadent in, in Nietzsche's expression, will create deranged political programs which are dangerous uh, to the people they govern and to the, to the biosphere of their um, countries. So say, 
true. So let's turn back to the main idea. The first form of thinking, which is life supporting, is having, you know, life supporting experiences. That is, you live in a healthy body, and you have a healthy soul, and you enjoy life, and you comment on it with words. Okay, which is pointing like it's like the Buddha's finger. They are pointing at the it's like a poet which is described his, his beloved. He is not going to kiss the book and to you know uh, sleep with his uh, this piece of paper on which he, he has written this poem. He knows that it is only a, a finger that is pointing to his real beloved. Next morning he's going and he throws this poem into a letterbox. Ne? Do, 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 if he is a, a romantic. Love yes. do, 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 do. But if you are thinking in this life destroying manner, then what you do, did you you know suppress the morphogenetic fields that are influencing you? You suppress your perception, you suppress the emotion in your perception. You create first dead objects, you make material out of meta, out of your mother, because the root of the weather, uh, of the word meta is mother. You make your mother earth into a homogeneous material through some technological uh, processes which have been developed on wrong conceptual models of meta which is reduced only to, to measurable surfaces. And do not be mistaken, even measuring subatomic world in this method is again measuring only surfaces. or complete illusions in computers, you know. I suppose the quantum theory is a complete illusion which arose in the brains, or in the mathematical brains, Uh, of, uh, of physicians and was then supported by a vicious circle uh, of uh, constructing uh, empiric series of devices which have proved what what theoretically thought about by the sheer fact that they were constructed to prove it. No? Okay, forget it. So the the, the life destroying way of thinking is to reducing the world first into surface objects and then make it to conceptual thoughts, ideas, and then changing completely the real world and putting in as a so as a pushing the real experience, the real world aside and pushing this conceptual model on the place, on its place, and starting to move inside this conceptual model as if it was reality, okay? And and you have institutions, you have universities, you have research institutes that live completely enclosed in this conceptual pyramids, you know? Ivory towers, it's okay. So, and Klages, and all life-supporting thinkers are using the first mode of thinking They do not change, they do not push away the real experience and put in its place concepts and think that they are real that the concepts are reality. No. That's why our way of thinking is uh, let us say artistic, no? emotional, visual, imaginary, full of imagery and supported. In my case, by the vibration of string instruments, which, you know, if the guitar, the guitar is positioned on, uh, in this case, I have it, I lie down. In this way, I'm, I'm repeating Socrates' uh, discovery that thinking is so demanding that you have to lie down. But Socrates was thinking in concepts. He is the creator of concepts, of the concept of concepts no? in philosophy. 
But nevertheless, this change from, you know, emotionally objective, let's say, visual, um, uh, dealing with the world, which was in, in the Greece at that time, the Greeks were very visual people. They, they liked to look at those beautiful statues. Woo! And when Socrates discovered that he can think, you know, without being involved in seeing and in feeling, it was such a great shock for the brain, let us say, for his personal brain, that he had to lie down. I suppose that the motoric functions of the brain were, uh, you know, unplugged because the brain needed so much resources and so much brain space uh, for thinking in concepts. I mean, also for this kind of thinking, it applies that it does not happen only in the brain. And the brain processes are a kind of correlate of what happens away from the brain. And here we, we have a kind of dangerous idea that this acosmic entity whose essence is the freezing of life and making it abstract, making it timeless and spaceless, okay? This is the idea of Clarges, so very important. All acts of consciousness are timeless and spaceless because when its essence is freezing, of the dynamism of life, then time freezes, okay, and space is, you know, evaporated into abstract space where abstract concepts are motionless forever the same. So I suppose that the abstract thinking, yes, poetically speaking, is, is being sucked in into this time, spaceless, timeless, spaceless wormholes into the other cosmos, into this our cosmos, yeah? which is a super science fiction idea that I have discovered. I must celebrate myself today on the 5th of March. Uh, 2022 on my bardic mattress in the city of Constance in Germany near the river Rhine and I am grateful for this to this unknown gentleman I will put his name on this video who has inspired me because it was so nice to find somebody who is simply uh, interested in the same questions a similar questions because if he is talking passionately about Ludwig Klages, yeah, when he is not talking about it, he is publishing, he is reading his works. No? And Gustav, uh, Karl Gustav Karus, who is the first to discover the unconscious, the flowing of the river of the soul, Nietzsche takes it from him and Freud takes it from Nietzsche. No? Oh, la, 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 la. By the way, Carus was also a good painter of the quality of Caspar David Friedrich, which is, you know, which tells you something. Okay, so I I have this sudden image. I have seen this sudden image as I was considering uh, Socrates and the phenomenology of conceptual thinking. That these thinkers who who have Changed, who have um, supplanted the real experience with abstract concepts, and they think this is the reality, and they operate with it like you know, in technology, in science, in politics, in psychology. They are killing the biosphere. They are killing themselves. They are killing life, you know, and our you know, human. A sense, no? do, do, do. and they do it because they are sucked in in every instant that they immerse in this thinking, this kind of 
life-destroying thinking in pure concept and regarding them as reality, reality, they are sucked in into this timeless and spaceless realm of this other cosmos. And some, you know, or whatever, we cannot imagine the, the, the source of power of this other cosmos. Uh, because it's a cosmos. No? And all images that we can have are coming from us, which, which we are part of this cosmos. We can only, as Clarges has uh, rightly pointed out, judge them according to the effect they have on our culture, on us individually. And we see, sometimes when I walk around the university where I have studied linguistics and literary sciences in the 80s, and I participated also in the first wave of artificial intelligence, which I have refused, uh, as discovered immediately as a complete mistake, yeah? uh, which I was interested in the philosophy of language, and have rightly pointed to the fact that signals are not meanings. The whole concept of artificial intelligence was hacked out by several uh, linguists who were not philosophers, who have made the crucial mistake of regarding signals, material carriers of signals, to regard them as meaning. Signals will forever remain signals, be it black letters, be it uh, hieroglyphs that are uh, in the rocks somewhere in, on the pyramids, be it Morse symbols that are some some peeps, beep, 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 be it uh, colorful flags that are being waved on ships. These are material signals. Now we can see them, we can hear them, and somewhere in the depths of human cortex, the transfer of these signals finishes in electromagnetic fields, and then there is black box. Then we do not know anything about how meaning arises, ne? how the actual vision, optical vision of this world arises, ne? how the actual hearing experience as a qualia of phenomenology, how it arises. And I say simply, it is outside the nervous system. Okay, it is the merging of morphogenetic field. Great mystery outside the nervous system, spatially, sometimes inside when we perceive uh, the pain in our leg or the the, 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 the taste of water now maybe uh, or the, the, the pain in our stomach or something like that. This is called external and internal perception. Okay, we shall conclude. I hope I have uh, made myself clear uh, that you cannot make um, uh, uh, biocentric thinkers, you cannot accuse them of falsely criticizing conceptual thinking by themselves using concepts. No, they are not using concepts in the hardcore style of uh, conceptual thinkers, they are using words, names that have a meaning, that have a visual quality, that have an emotional quality, and they are pointing with these words, okay, on what cannot be described completely with words or with concepts, absolutely not, even with those words, it cannot be with those meaningful words, it can be pointed at and depends on the <coughs> soul of the receiver that he receives these words as acoustic, you know, 
certain shapes mm-hmm. né? in his ear and then it transfers into his brain and then it, it, it loses itself in the black box of meaning creation, né? which is a mystery. What is important to say that Clages uses logic nevertheless. Because uh, logic is not mathematics, okay? Logic applies even in the biosphere of this time and space. Logic of such a type that two objects cannot be in the same place. So. And if something is accepted as true, then something follows from that and not an illogical thing, but a logical thing. Yeah? So Clages is going forward using logical arguments, but pointing at the you know illogical conclusions of all materialistic philosophies and all idealistic philosophies by you know leading them into paradoxes. He, he, he is following. He is one of those great thinkers who says, okay. Let us accept that what you say is true, then let us follow it to, to extreme consequences. Uh, and then it, it, he proves by that, logically, that all system of materialism or all system of idealism are a mistake, uh, especially the empirism. Uh. The first part of his work is uh, devoted to the refutation of all systems of materialism and idealism so that we uh, reach then the biocentric phenomenalism né, at the end but it is based on a logical uh, system of arguments né? that's why we can conclude <laughs> even that all materialistic and idealistic systems so far are actually irrational oh, because they are illogical Nevertheless, Nietzsche would say they are necessary. They were necessary because they were good mistakes at the beginning of the human race. They made our survival possible by creating uh, good technology for everyday life. No? They made our cultural survival possible no? because they created religions and arts and philosophies that helped us, you know, uh, in, in difficult moments of despair, yeah? they were necessary. No? But now, we are starting to destroy ourselves and our biosphere by using the same source of power, that is, the ability of the human soul to expand into space and time, but we have made the mistake of, you know, damaging the soul after hundreds of years of uh, theoretical thinking in concepts so much that it lost its ability to merge with the field of the biosphere, with the life fields of all plants, animals, winds, fires, oceans, and so, and so we, be, we start to degenerate. This is, this is Nietzsche's concept of decadence. No? Because when we lose the ability to merge with the fields of nature, our bodies are going to, well, they are going to weaken, they are going to disintegrate because the life force is not going to be there. And the correlation of this weak body will be a weak soul, a soul that will be an easy prey for the great enemy, the timeless and spaceless attack from a cosmos, which we have traced uh, as uh, the wounds of it we have traced in the clear pond of the morphogenic field of our soul as six, uh, one after the another, subsequently also as ego, ego point, 
ego is a mathematical point but it has it has the this the only entity in the biosphere of this earth that really is permanent changeless timeless spaceless and it has an effect on the morphogenetic field of the soul by throwing it in chaos in a certain sense disorder leaving the natural order and creating consciousness self consciousness and and a person is then created yeah? i am i personal will to power which takes care so that i get what i want and i don't have to you know make what i don't want to make and then for that i need orientation if i want to get something i have to see objects that which i want and i have to see hindrances which i do not want said so, okay objective perception and then later on i have to think out about clever theories how to get what i want from the others i have to create religions and laws and morals and and, and, and contracts and business and governments and democracy and political gender correctness and all kinds of resentment phenomena speaking with nietzsche uh, by the way uh, and i have to create conceptual thinking for that okay and now since the renaissance our science which is followed this way also the science was created um following the example of astronomy astronomy watching the stars and measuring the um, running around in the empty cosmos was not quite you know sane thing to do but it was not sane it was not dangerous because it considered some distant uh, objects né uh, for the astronomer and uh, uh, his papers he was calculating né but as soon as we have uh, applied this method on natural sciences it started to be dangerous you know? but nevertheless it's when it was concerning uh, uh say simple machines like windmills and boiling water running the trains and so it was still somehow invented of mechanics so to say uh, and but then it started to concept electromagnetism no? and then after all subatomic uh, physics and above all cellular life and genetic codes then it became hell dangerous because on the premises of reduction models and wrong models as we have said Nietzsche all these models are basically wrong because they are only approximations and disregarding the unmeasurable which is the soul emotion and the essence for us for biocentric uh, phenomenologists it is the causation sphere of life is the weaving of unmeasurable morphogenetic fields that are full of emotion okay pong because they move us eh they move to each other they are emotional and eh? emotional at the same time so it became really dangerous and now we are facing self destruction in all realms we have made the mistake of con- regarding this conceptual abstract models for reality so we have destroyed agriculture by making conceptual models of plant life we have destroyed human life by making conceptual reductive models of cellular life and genetic uh, you know uh, processes so woo, we have destroyed communal life but we have created conceptual models of politics that is uh, life destroying you know? woo, okay but it is the same this is the the most shocking 
Nietzsche's idea né, that this is the same source of power that the humans have got from the evolution on this planet, né, that their soul field, morphogenetic field of the soul, can expand more further into space and time. At the beginning, it is a great help even though it is you know wrong but in the in the sense that it is you know the, the results are life supporting later on it is wrong again but with the result that it is life destroying ladies and gentlemen what is the solution for the biocentric phenomenology ludwig lagers and even heidegger And even Nietzsche touched it when he when he fell asleep on vineyard somewhere in Italy, and he woke up and he saw the yellow grapes, and he was totally happy for a moment. And said, "Was this not perfect? Was the moment not perfect? And do you know why it was perfect? Because there was no consciousness, there was no ego, there was sleep." And the awakening, the transition period of waking from sleep, he could still glimpse this beautiful, childhood-like, paradise-like way of relating to the world, which is passively accepting what is happening, abstaining from will to power, abstaining from timeless and spaceless acts of consciousness which are cutting the world into parts and we are measuring these parts and making wrong conceptions according to these measurements and like that we destroy the world our biosphere ourselves so the suggestion is passivity at least i would say for 200 years no? nietzsche says we will not uh, you know we will not get rid of our way of thinking which has been created by 2000 years of you know christianity we will not get rid of gods or god if we will of metaphysics at all if we do not get rid of grammar because the substantive ne, the verb the adjective are simply you know frozen concepts that are pointing to our frozen perception that they are things and that they are qualities of these things these are the adjectives ne? and that there are processes which these things are causing these are our verbs and when there is a verb there must be an agent somebody who is causing it ne? you see our grammar is mirroring our freeze freezing con- uh, the, you know, our static conception This was a help at the beginning when it was concerning big things like if you freeze a stone you know and you realize the stone is a stone and that it has a certain weight then you can evade it when it is falling yeah okay but now it is concerning a secret you know web of life and its micro and macro levels our freezing ability na no? conceptual thinking and objective perception and devoid of emotionality and of dynamism no? is going to kill us yeah? so stay calm lie down get a guitar put it on your head like i lie with the guitar on my left like a like a girlfriend eh? 
with the strings to the ceiling naturally, no? <laughs> otherwise it was not And with the neck of the guitar put slightly on the root of my nose between my brows. And I guarantee to you, if you try it, you know, these vibrations of the string, no? on the lobus pred centralis, yeah? on the, let us say, two or three cubic centimeters of a gray brain mass, where the correlation of your ego is, you know, working hard yeah, to make you, you know, to make you you, yeah? to defend you, to defend your money and your property and to, to make all those acts of, you know, conscious fighting for everything you want to have and defending and throwing away and what you don't want to have. So this is going to be, you know, in a pleasant way, shaken, vibrating, and it will make your thinking fluid. I must confess it took me some 12 years, 13, 12 to 13 years to, to enhance this method. It's everything. It's, it's learning tennis or it's learning Qigong and whatever a new uh, capability ability you learn, it takes time no? to, to, and training. No? Do, 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 do. Yeah. And now I remember why I talk about Socrates. No? We are going one step further. We can divide the human history of thinking into two steps, three steps. One step, one period from the very beginning to Socrates. Then Socrates' creation of concepts. No? And lie down because you, you have hit the nervous system with such a great demand that it was not able to, to, to do it without, you know, switching off some other capabilities like, like, like walking, like standing. The thinking is a kind of motion, and it's like in antique. In the antique uh, schools, uh, people were walking while thinking. Even Nietzsche is in this tradition when he says, thinking must be born, philosophy must be born while walking or running, not while sitting. That's why he was, you know, just writing down a few sentences as he was running in the Alps, no, on, on the mountain or alongside the Italian sea. No? And um, he made just a few notes and then he has written on it uh, in those fragments no? because you know it's dynamic thinking is dynamic it, it is mo moving forward no? one word then the other one thought then the other moving forward that's why it was walking no? walking helped then you know solidify uh, 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 the new ability man has uh, found in conceptual thinking. They first they had to lie down. It was such a shock, you know, like 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 as if this 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 this, uh, this entity X, you know, this timeless, spaceless entity that hit Socrates with such enormous power. We may we may speculate of this was not uh, his diamond. On uh, he's talking about his diamond on was not the. Uh, um, so to say, expression of this entity X hitting him with such an enormous power. He had to lie down, then he recovers and he starts to adjust his nervous system to this new experience. He starts to walk slowly and then out of this develops the, the school of um, walking while thinking, you know? the thinking like Walking, you know. This we have the second stage until now. Okay, <laughs> like I say, when we all, when we exaggerate, there suddenly were 
poets and dreamers and philosophers who lie down in a similar way as I do because they felt such a such an enormous power engulfing them with emotion and with images that they had to lie down again when they opened themselves to the Akashic supra-individual morphogenetic field which contains all deep life-supporting thoughts which Heidegger calls die Gedächtnis. You know, Certainly they were there. But until Klages, nobody has formulated scientifically in exact terms what is happening. Now we have it. Now we have it. And I lie down here for you, for the followers of all those Giordano Brunos and Novalises and Heidegger's Nietzsche's and the romantic poets now and philosophers and renaissance mystic philosophers and even in the antiquity there must have been some who have felt this Heraclitus now we have to make it to an institution now we, I shall <coughs> let myself be surprised what will happen. So now this is finished and have a nice flow. Stay in flow. It is not finished. It is continuous. It is now flowing to you. Bum <laughs> <laughs>